How's it going guys? I'm Connor from Running Warehouse and it's finally happening. This is the first episode of the Running Warehouse Connection, our new weekly show where we bring the running community together to talk about anything and everything running related. This week's guest, we've got one of my favorite shoe reviewers in the game. He's brutally honest and not afraid to speak his mind. We've got Thomas from Believe in the Run. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's, it's amazing to be the first guest on the show because that either means I'm the test guinea pig and you're going to wait to bring in the big guns later or I'm really important. I'm hoping it's for the second reason. You know, it, it is a little bit of both, but, uh, you know, we are excited to have you here. And I personally would like to have you here in person, but, you know, given how the world is moving right now, we, we had to go remote, but uh, we're going to keep things rolling. We, we want to give the community uh, a great place to come and talk running shoes. So just given what's going on in the world today, can you give the people an update on how you're doing? Are you still training? Are you still reviewing running shoes? We're still reviewing. Anything that uh, the uh, companies want to send, we're going to go ahead and you know, give it a tryout. I kind of got a fortunate accident. Like every time I talk to you, I'm like a little bit injured. When we were there in Bispo, my Achilles was acting up. So I thought it was good since we were working out in the house now and couldn't go to the gym or anything. I was doing box jumps here at the house and I was doing a box jump and I pulled something in my back. I'm getting old. And it just has taken me out. I, I took about a week off, ran two times and it felt great. And then all of a sudden, like, my hip and my leg were just like the muscles. I don't know if it's related to the back or seriously just falling apart during this time of Corona, but I am taking it nice and easy right now. But yeah, all our guys are reviewing. We've got uh, the Cumulus 22 review coming out soon. We've got a Clifton 7 review coming out soon. We've got the Endorphin uh, Speed coming out for a review. So luckily it's not just me putting miles in the shoes. We've got Jarrett and Robbie and Megan and Dave and Adrian and Taylor and Jeremy. I mean, we've got a, we got a big crew of guys and girls that are, or I, I guess to say guys and women out there that can uh, review shoes. So we're, we're moving forward. Yeah, that's good to hear. You know, even if you might be a little out of commission right now, you still got a pretty big stable of reviewers to keep the, the party rolling. So, all right. So, you talked about you're re reviewing a lot of shoes right now. What are some shoes that you'd say you're most excited about? Um, you mentioned the Endorphin. I personally have been running a lot in that one. It's a shoe that I love. What are some shoes right now that they just have kind of blown your mind? Well, I do love the Endorphin series. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm over the hill in it in this way. Like, I guess when we're reviewing shoes, we're always kind of, it's the next and the next. So we did our miles in the Endorphin series. I really like it. Like I highly recommend it. And even though the shift's weight is a little bit on the heavy side, it's just such a nice shoe to roll your easy miles in. And then you've got the Endorphin Pro that you can slap on for speed work and for racing. And right now, since there's no races, it's still fun to do like tempo runs in it and fart licks and all that stuff. So that would definitely be a, a great little lineup to play with while, while you're on like your solo runs and stuff like that and keep you interested in running. I think one of the things I've always loved about gear is when I got a new shoe in or something, I was excited for that run the next day. So maybe you don't need to be mo motivated by a race or something come up. It's just the pure enjoyment of, hey, what can I do in the shoe? What can I run? What kind of paces can I hit in this? And, and have fun with it. Yeah. Now, people maybe who are on our channel, Running Warehouse, they know me. Maybe they don't know you as well. Um, Believe in the Run. That's kind of your company. How did that get started? How did you start reviewing running shoes? Yeah, it was kind of silly because uh, when I first got started, I decided I was going to run the Trans Rockies race in um, Colorado. Uh, the 120-mile stage race that starts in Buena Vista, Colorado and goes to Beaver Creek. Um, terrified me. It's, you know, every day you run up, you know, elevation and come back down elevation, then run back up. It's, it's over the mountaintops. And um, so when I was getting started in that, I wanted to fundraise money for the Baltimore Child Abuse Center. 
And so I set up a website to kind of have a place to put up my donation stuff and get stuff going. This was back in 2009. There wasn't a lot of running websites. There wasn't anybody really, I mean, Runner's World was there reviewing shoes. Uh, I think Ginger Runner started his channel two years after that. Um, there was nobody really out there doing it in like consistent except for one guy and that was Pete Larson with Run Blogger. And Pete was nice enough to kind of like almost tutor me a little bit in the website stuff, but that cuts further down originally for Believe in the Run though, it was set up as a charity site. And what happened was I would kind of like log my training there, tell people what I was doing, but people wanted to know like, oh, what nutrition are you taking? What shoes are you wearing? What, you know, what was that? I saw a photo of you in these shorts. What were those? And when I started talking about that stuff, I guess companies saw it and they were like, hey, could I send you? I remember the first thing I got was a stick of glide. And I was just like, holy crap, this is the coolest thing ever. They just sent me a, a free stick of glide. And I, I thought like I've hit, I've hit the jackpot. <laughs> so I started talking about more of the gear and stuff like that. And the more I did, you know, it's kind of just one brand would see that another brand sent stuff. And, and like I said, uh, Pete was huge because he, he was, had connections with Saucony and New Balance and all these different companies. And Pete would, uh, without me even asking, he would say, hey, I, I talked to the guy at Saucony. They, they want to send you a pair of shoes. Just, you know, if you could write up your thoughts on it or whatever. And next thing I know, I'm on a steady diet of, of gear coming in. And it just kind of grew from there. And so it was really just myself for the beginning. Then Megan came on and it kind of ramped up more. And then we added, um, Robbie came on to Big Run Media, which is our parent company. And he's been helping with Believe in the Run. And since then, we've really seen a lot of growth. And, and you know, the three of us being able to work on it Robbie does a great job managing the reviewers that we have what we try to do is we have a really close-knit group of reviewers so that you're not getting random people uh, just reviewing a shoe and having like a multi-test review with a bunch of people you don't know you should like we're trying to make sure you know who's reviewing the shoe what style they run what they like to do and stuff like that so that's been really helpful that's that's awesome now it started with a stick of glide and now it's come to all these shoes we see behind you your yeah. question is similar to mine but a lot more organized um how long did it take to accumulate all of these shoes well i mean it's more curate because like i pretty much i keep like okay i know there's certain shoes that i like like in a line like i'm gonna i'm gonna go through i mean zante was one of them that you know i got the first zante I liked it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep, I'm going to hold on to that one because I want to see how the line goes from there. And so I have like some shoes. I have like the line from the get go, Kimbaras, uh, Clifton's, um, you know, I thought some other shoes were going to go through lines and they didn't. Um, so, you know, and the Zante is pretty much gone now with the tempo coming on. But so it's, it's more of a curious. So a lot of times with my old shoes, I, I don't, sell them i'll just even though they don't have a lot of wear on them i'll just either donate them to goodwill or you know ring up my friends and just be like hey i've got size tens and a half that i'm getting rid of and um just let people come and pick them up and try them out that's awesome now people have been hitting us up recently about just running shoe questions in general people were asking me about you when you were in town what's thomas's favorite running shoe now let's shift this conversation a little bit more towards running shoes. And right now, what's the big topic? Carbon fiber plates. Uh, what's your thought on carbon fiber plate shoes? There's a lot of discussion. Should they be banned? Should stack heights be banned? Where do carbon fiber plates fit in the market right now? Where do you see them going? Let, let's talk carbon fiber plates. All right. I mean, it's kind of, it's like an ingredient. I don't think you need to put you know, mayonnaise on everything. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good on this, it's good on that, but it doesn't need to be throughout. And I feel like it's the same way with the carbon plate. Like everybody thinks that a carbon plate is gonna make a shoe fantastic. And that's just not the case. Uh, I mean, a lot of shoes I like 
don't have carbon plates in it, even for racing. Um, and I, I feel like right now everybody's experimenting with it because of Nike taking the lead and the, the response the public's had to those shoes. But I, th I think what's going to be interesting is the next thing that comes along. And, you know, I was even talking with ASICs um, on, uh, I guess, was that Monday or Tuesday? With uh, or What was yesterday? I, it's so hard to keep track of days in the corona days. But um, it was Tuesday. I was talking with ASICs. And, you know, their new shoe, the Meta Racer, is bottom-loaded carbon plate. And so I was asked him, I said, what was the, what was the thought process there? And he, they basically told me, and it makes sense if you think about like the, the paper fine. Let me see. Pop this one down. The vapor fly has this stack. I mean, they kind of hide it up here in the front. But the reason why this has a carbon plate, and everybody thinks a carbon plate's a spring, it, it's to provide structure and rigidity and stability in this shoe. If you took this carbon plate out of here, this foam just goes everywhere. So. In this shoe, they didn't need that to, to be, provide the structure. It's just there to give that extra bit of rigidity for the toe off and give you that energy return from coming this way. But really, I think if we look at some of these shoes that they're talking about banning, you asked about stack height, coming down is where you're gonna feel that bounce. So this is coming down, that's the spring, up and down. This direction, that just is giving you a little bit of leverage and maybe kicking you forward. So it does some advantage there, but it's not as it's it's not as exciting as everybody makes just throwing a carbon plate in a shoe. And you can tell because I mean, look at all the shoes that threw carbon plates in them that are no good. I mean, I can, I could tell you, you know which one I don't like. <laughs> uh, I don't even know where I put it on the shelf here. I'm gonna keep it just because I think it's a, uh, a almost a collector's item because I feel like it's one of those shoes that never should have seen the light of day. Um, but that would be the Hyperion Elite. That one has a, a plate in it, and it's, you know, it, it, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think what the point you bring across with carbon fiber plates is really important because plates have been used for years, since I, I think around the 80s. I'd even argue that the Mizuno has a plate. Yep. yep. Yeah, and, and the plates, I think with the Vaporfly, the main thing is that foam is so soft and it's got such a low durometer that you really need something to put in it. To the, Most of that propulsion is coming straight from the foam. And I think when we start talking about regulating things, it's really the foam that's doing most of the work. And that's a whole other conversation because how do you regulate the foam? I mean, maybe the stack height is some one measure, but uh, it's kind of hard to say a certain compound is too responsive. Yeah, and, and I've, look, I've run in a lot of different shoes, and while I, I, I do love the Vaporfly, but it, it didn't, it's, my personal best is still in the Kimbara 3, and after that, my second fastest time was in the uh, New Balance Zante. Yeah. So my third fastest time is in the Vaporfly next, for the, for the marathon. Wow. Wow. That's, I mean, that's interesting. And it just goes to show that every person is different. You know, we're not one shoe is going to be the best shoe for every person. Uh, I have a fellow coworker who just couldn't get the Vaporfly to work for him. So it's, it's one of those things where you kind of have to try each shoe and see what works best for you. Now, moving back, we were talking about the Hyperion Elite. And uh, I know you were one of the first reviewers to get a high part Hyperion Elite review out on the market. Yeah. It, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was honest. You know, you, 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 said, yeah. uh, you said your thoughts. You and Megan, I, I believe, tested them. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Megan and I tested it. I mean, here it is. It, I think the proof was, you know, we, get, we took a lot of heat for giving it a bad review. I think there's a lot of people that either, you know, you love a brand and you don't like to see it or you just don't want to, trust you know one of these reviewers out here and you have something to say but this particular one we got a lot of negative feedback on giving this a bad review and i think we were justified when we saw what happened with the shoe and what desi was wearing when she got to um when she got to the olympic trials and she's actually wearing a shoe that has the um dna flash uh 
midsole, which is a, which is the nitrogen infused midsole. It's a lot like the Razor Three or one of your favorite shoes, the uh, Max Road from Skechers. I mean, it's a lot like that. And they took it and put it in this. So I kind of have an idea of what this is probably like. What Des was wearing from wearing the Skechers Elite because it's it's similar foam. It would just depend on what they did, how high it stacked, if it's softer, lighter. But yeah, I mean, we, we, I mean, I think the Let's Run, somebody posted our review on there and then just like we got, I got, you know, flame broil. Um, I didn't even go read it because I knew Let's Run isn't exactly the friendliest of places to go. So I just let, uh, I, I, Megan went and read, she's like, yeah, you don't want to go read it. But uh, the, I, I feel like now we're, we're justified. Have you run in the shoe? I have. I, I got my pair a little after you, so I went and saw your review, and then uh, I hadn't ran in it yet. Then I went out and got my own run. And I agree um, with your review to an extent. Um, it's one of those things where when I got it on my foot, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. It was a little firmer. Um, it didn't quite have the bounce I was expecting. When I watched your review, I was like, man, Thomas is, is being honest right now and really blasting, <laughs> blasting off. But I, I think it was warranted in an extent because we are getting treated now. Before, we had the Vaporfly, and that's all we had. Um, mm. Now we've got so many different options, and there are such good shoes out there. So if you're going to put a $250 price tag on a shoe, you kind of have to – you got to bring yeah. the heat. So yeah. with the Hyperion Elite – uh when I ran some fast efforts in it, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a good shoe. I, I did a couple of sub five minute sessions and it ran pretty well. When I did some slower efforts, it didn't feel as good. So I know a lot of their testers were elite marathoners. Um, but at the same time, as you said, uh, Des was wearing a different shoe come the trials. So I think they've come to see that there are better materials out there and that will be being updated. I believe in the very near future, there should be a V2 hopefully yeah. coming around the fall. Um, so I think we're in a weird spot where had the Hyperion Elite came out maybe a year ago, I don't know if it would have gotten quite the heat because there just wasn't as many great shoes out there. Yeah, I still think it would have gotten the heat. Like uh, I think they, like uh, the Carbon Rocket from Hoka that came out yep. right after that one got trashed and deservedly so. Um, yeah. And that was another one we didn't give a great review to. Uh, we didn't trash it, but we just didn't give a great review to it. That one actually hurt. I remember that one actually hurt running in after a while. But you saw that, you know, the people decided for themselves and the shoe is gone. Um, and it, they didn't even update it. Um, I mean, they're, have, they're gonna have new shoes out, similar yeah. names, but it's not the same shoe at all. This one though, and, and I hear you, and, and when I was doing, and I even said, when I did uh, like striders, so that's me going all out, you know, and stuff, the shoe felt a little bit better on my foot. But that's the thing, like a Vaporfly feels good on someone going uh, at a 10 minute mile and it feels great in someone going a five minute mile. Like when people tell me that, oh, well, this shoe is good for that, the mechanics and basically what we're doing is similar so it maybe it's the amount of time that you're actually making contact with the ground and how, how it's different but in general when we review a shoe we have faster and slower reviewers and i would call myself a middle of the pack uh runner you know i'm running my my marathon pace is a 740 something and my you know my uh that but recently i ran a 5k at like 20 minutes and 19 seconds and you know yeah that one actually I, I feel like i can i was hoping this spring i was hoping to actually go sub 20 but I, you know so that speed comparatively to someone like you who's, who's pretty fast um it's different but i i have to believe that the mechanics of our feet and what's going on inside the shoe and the way that it feels is still pretty similar and I, I think when we talk about these kind of new super shoes, carbon plated shoes, it all started with the Vaporfly. And I think the Vaporfly was a very unique shoe in, in the fact that like you pretty much sub elite, sub elite runners had huge benefits, but 
also you're seeing people seven minute mile, eight minute, 10 minute miles, we're still seeing benefits. And it was almost the first shoe that had this high level of cushioning that pretty much any runner could use, but it was still in a very lightweight package. And when we look at even shoes that were very popular in the past, like the Adios, it just wasn't a viable option for a large majority of runners to wear. So I think that's yeah. where Vaporfly really opened things up for the mass market. And that that's the thing. Like I, I was able to run in flats and, you know, it, it, for the marathon. But if you're going to be out there for over four hours, you don't want to be wearing a flat. Um, the thing is the Vaporfly can handle that. And I, I really think, and when you say compare, when I look at the other shoes that have come out in the market, I've always been disappointed. I actually thought Hoka would be one of the first to get out there because they had those soft shoes that had that high cushion and the light foam. And I felt like, how, how can they not just add a, a plate in there and it'll be just like the Vaporfly? So I guess it's tougher than, than I thought. But the first company to really kind of, in my mind, give me something that is comparable and maybe works almost better for me than the Vaporfly is Saucony with the Indoor Pro. I think that I, I like both both of these shoes for different reasons, the Meta Racer and the Endorphin Pro, but I think for marathon distance, for me, this just has that little bit extra cushioning and the feel is very familiar to the Vaporfly, but the fit of the upper is better. Um, it's a little heavier. So the Meta Racer is about dead on with the, the Vaporfly, where this is about an ounce heavier. Yeah, the Endorphin Pro, we got the, the chance to do a lot of cool content recently on that. We met up with Jared Ward, and that was the one thing. He did a lot of testing, and he is very particular about his shoes. He was trying to make an Olympic team, and the Endorphin Pro, for his data, for his running stride was working better. So I think it goes to show that like every runner is a little bit different. I mean, all these shoes now are getting so good. But uh, yeah, it, it'd be curious to get you on a treadmill and see what works better than Which one, the endorphin. And, and that's the thing I've never really been tested. I only going off of like feel and what I feel like. But uh, you know, there's no race coming up. There's no nothing. I took these out for an 11 mile run, and I wasn't even planning on you know pushing the pace. I was just going out for like I've got the issues. I got to get miles in on review and I found myself just truck along in these I just love it and uh, that is the thing that you know the more that these shoes come out everybody thinks like Nike has a stranglehold on this uh, you know category right now and I think it did have a str stranglehold but I think we're going to start seeing these shoes that are tuned and maybe you know here's where there's some wiggle room and we will see stuff that works better for some people and honestly I think that there's still some traditional trainers that work better than plated shoes for some runners. So yeah, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. And with just all the variety out there, we've also got a couple new shoes. You mentioned the Meta Racer. We've got uh, the Aggie Zero Pro as well. Those are two new plated shoes that are a little closer to the ground. Have you tried either of those? What are your thoughts? I mean, yeah, been, I ran in the Meta Racer. I reviewed the Meta Racer. I really like it. Um, the Meta Racer for me is a confidence thing. Like I went in a double digit run and it, my feet felt great, but I didn't get it up to like really high mileage. And I was wondering how much of the lower stack underneath the forefoot would do for me. Cause I do land, I land right around here. So coming down, I really need a shoe that has some uh, support and the cushioning in the front. I was surprised how good my feet felt after the run in this shoe. So it, I think I would just need, like, a, I would like to do a, a few more longer runs in this shoe at pace to see how it goes. But overall, I think it's a tremendous shoe. I love the, the design, um, you know, what, they, what they're doing behind it. You knew I kind of fell in love with it when I was out there with you and Bispo, and we, we looked at this shoe. I was like, oh, I love it. I mean, just the style was great. Um, so it, it doesn't disappoint. It doesn't have the bounce that, say, maybe – you know, the Saucony has or, or the Nike. And I find once you get over double digit miles, the bounce seems less noticeable anyway. So, I, you know, I don't know. I kind of want to feel like I wouldn't mind doing like back to back weekends 
you know, switching it up between these two. Yeah, I, I had similar thoughts with the Meta Racer. I've done a couple of workouts in them now. Uh, the, the lower to the ground field definitely has its own unique uh, ride and experience. I tested them on one track workout, which I, I really liked. Um, at the same time, like it kind of felt a little bit like a traditional racing flat, but in like a new age package, it felt a little yeah. more responsive. It has that stiffness from the plate. For a marathon, I don't know if it would be my top pick currently. I think something like an Endorphin Pro or a Vaporfly would be more in my wheelhouse just because I like a little more cushioning. But I think there are people who are going to really like the Meta Racer. So it's going to kind of come down to your own personal preferences. Um, so I'm excited for that shoe. On the other hand, we've got the Addy Zero Pro. And that's a shoe that I've done very little in. We got a sample of them. I did some strides in it. Um, it's got the light strike and boost mix. So the midsole compound, I'm still a little weary on it because I'm not sure if it is going to be able to compete with something like a Zoom X or the, uh, the Power Run PB. So we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, my main concern, though, is going to be weight. Um, I don't know if it is going to be right in the wheelhouse of some of these other shoes. So we're going to have to wait till we get a production quality to see what it comes in at. But have you heard about the Addy Zero Pro yet? I have, I, I'm a little disappointed with the light strike foam. Like it, to me, it was kind of like, what, <laughs> you know, what happened? It, like you wrote light strike on the side of it, but it doesn't really have anything that's that much more revolutionary over what they were using before. Um, you know, in, in the Boston, they had that, you know, the EVA with the boost compound. And, you know, I tried out the, uh, the new at a zero and then the light strike version of it. And I felt like the light strike is just, it, it was a little bit on the hard side. Um, and the boost, I love the boost and the ultra boost, but I know what that's for. That is for really slow or not really slow, but easy miles. Uh, there was a kid down at, um, when we were running my last 5k, there was a, uh, the, kid that one was wearing the solar boots and I was just like, holy cow, <laughs> you're moving in those. And, uh, but you know, it's a heavy shoe. So, but it's a really comfortable shoe. And, and I would trade that off like for easy days. That's why I like the shift. It feels great underfoot. I like the, I, I do like the ultra boost to run. And I know that's like blasphemy in the running community, but it, I enjoy running in that shoe. Um, but as you get to the fast guys, every ounce matters. And I was even a little afraid of the endorphin. I'm like, what am I going to feel at mile 22 when I'm wearing these versus I'm wearing Vaporfly? Is that extra ounce going to come into play? And people think, well, what's the, how much is the weight? But if you think about how far you're moving that 26 miles, an extra ounce, what is that really what a way up to at the end of the, the race? It's, it's a substantial amount of weight. Yeah. And that, that's a great point because I think, even competitors in the Olympic trials were thinking about that because we had the vapor fly and we had the alpha fly for Nike athletes. And I think people were trying to figure out, do I go with the vapor fly, which is what I've been running in and it's a little lighter, or do I try out the new innovative alpha fly, which had a higher stack height and supposedly was a more efficient ride, but it came at the expense of a heavier weight. So we saw two uh, Galen Rupp and Jake Riley, both wearing the alpha fly. And then uh, we saw Abdi wearing the Vaporfly. So I think that's going to be something, even moving into the future, that there, there are going to be trade-offs when we start looking at stack height versus weight. And there's so much, uh, regardless of weight, stack height, whatever, so much is mental for us. Like when you strap on your Vaporflies, you see Kipchoge in your mind, you see these people, and it, it's a trickle-down effect. Yeah, I'm not going to break the marathon in under two hours but if it worked for that guy it's a fast shoe i've seen other people wear it and psychologically when you look at the lineups of the last when we were having races um you saw the vapor fly was overwhelmingly in the front if you were a fast person you cared about your training and stuff you're in the front you're wearing vapor flies and it start it will start to shift i think but for now that's what it is. So when you, when your brain says to you, "Hey, what shoes fast?" You're gonna 
I think it's hard to break. Like I would have a, I'm, I have a tough time moving away from Vaporfly now for race day, just because I know it works for me. It works for the top athletes. And you're telling like, do I gamble on something else on race day just in case? So I wouldn't underestimate just like the psychology of, of getting these out there. I mean, I think it helps it what Jared Ward did in New York city. Um, you know, that kind of stuff starts to move the needle. And then I think if people just try it and you see people post on Strava, they're having great runs in a shoe and feels fast and stuff it, 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 you know, people's minds will change. Yeah. I think I'm in the same boat. Cause you know, we saw the breaking two with Kipchoge originally, and you just, you have this picture in your mind of this amazing shoe and then you try it on, you have a couple good workouts in it. You have a couple good races. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're like, I need this shoe if I want to compete at my best. But at the end of the day, too, there are more options available. So now we, we got to look and see, okay, what else is there? Another shoe, the Skechers Speed Elite. I think it's kind of been a sleeper, um, but now it's starting to pick up some traction. And uh, it's a shoe that I actually wore for pretty much every speed workout this past uh, cross-country season. So it, it became a favorite of mine. Was that a shoe that you did much mileage in? And what were your thoughts on that? I mean, I do like it. I like something a slight bit softer. Like I, I, I feel like it's a really, it's definitely Kurt and his team have put together a really nice shoe. And I, for me, running in it, it's just a, a they soften, like the first one I got, the zebra one, that was a lot harder. So the new one got softened up uh, a little bit and I, uh, it's up here somewhere. It got softened up a little bit, but not quite enough. And I, like, so I tend to go something that like the the durometer of, of the issue really appealed to me as far as that mix of firm and soft, you know, it just, it just really has a nice landing feel where I felt um, not as much cushion coming down on the, on the, uh, speed elite but that's like you said coming down to people's perf personal preferences and you know we we have the lucky advantage that we get to try these shoes we get to try a bunch of different shoes and find out where the fine tuning is and what what works for us whereas if you're in the general public and you hear everybody raving about the vapor fly and you hear that it should be illegal because you're so fast in it then you're gonna end up you know you're not going to try the elite, the endorphin, the other ones you're going to go with like the pop. But. Yeah. And I, I, that's a great point. And going back to Kurt from Skechers, uh, they have an amazing team and they're putting out great product. And we recently just went and visited them, got to see a little sneak peek of what's to come. I'm super excited. And I think Skechers is one of those brands that, you know, if, if you're really into the running scene right now, you've probably started to hear more about them. But I think there are a lot of people out there who maybe still have this 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 image in their head of what Skechers is. And, you know, maybe for a younger, uh, for more of a kid shoe or uh, a cheaper shoe. And Skechers performance is not that. Skechers performance is literally giving people and giving competitive runners what they want. So, I've been super excited about pretty much everything Skechers has been putting out. And the one thing that I realized was they're trying to nail uh, a purpose for each shoe. So it, they're getting so specific on what they're trying to deliver with each product that they're really just every new uh, product that comes out is just innovative and something to be excited about. So yeah. I think coming and in. I know, yeah. That is a great, great thing about Skechers is, um, it's very easy to know what shoe is for what. And we did a video on basically what we are, the Skechers lineup. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's very specific. There's not a lot of crossover. You know, some shoes, like, I, you can get confused. There's like, okay, there's the Pegasus, there's the React, there's the, you know, there's all these similar um, shoes in, in some lineups. That you're like, well, how am I picking? What? How do I know which one's right for me in this one? Other than price, um, you know, like this one's you know 180 and this one's 120, and you know, 
all that kind of stuff. But Sketch has really has done a nice job of really putting a purpose, like you said, behind the shoe. So yeah, they did. I, I, I they were one of the first brands that made direct contact with me. Like other brands would send me stuff, but not really to, like there wasn't a two-way conversation. Where Kurt and that team was the first ones that like, what do you think of this shoe? Uh, oh, do you want to try this? If we if we do this, would you like that kind of stuff? And he they do listen to the athletes, and you do see the changes in their product based on the athletes. And and the other thing that's kind of cool is Megan's a wear tester for them, so you know I get to see a little sneak peek into the advance. But it makes reviewing what's currently out sometimes hard because you're like, I know what's coming. Like at one point I hinted that uh, the rubber on the bottom of the ride, I wish it was a little tackier, a little bit more grippy. And, you know, I knew that they were getting a contract with Goodyear for, for, for the next iteration. So, you know, it's like I get to look a little bit like a magician with the, making a suggestion and then it happening. But <laughs> yeah, and I, I'd, I'd agree with your point that they are listening. I, I talked with Kurt recently and, we're always kind of going back and forth on crazy ideas. And sometimes, you know, my doorbell rings and I've got a package and it's a custom made shoe of something I never thought would be possible. So it's one of those things where they're not afraid to kind of push some buttons and do things that are outside of their comfort zone. So that's, that's cool. Is, is there any shoes? I know you said you've kind of looked into the future. Is there anything that you're excited about that maybe you can talk about or, it's coming out in the near future. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff. I don't know how much I could talk about it. I'm hoping yeah. hoping on our Instagram live show to get New Balance on soon because I'd like to see if they'll be willing to talk about some of the things that I know that's out there. Um, I know I saw when I was there with you the speed with a with a plate on it. <laughs> the track workout. Are we allowed to talk about that, or is that get, is this getting cut out? <laughs> you know, it, it, nothing's been official. Uh, Kurt did uh, scrape together a speed six that he glued a plate on. I told him that for speed days, but also uh, uh, days that I don't want to get beat up as much. That could be a cool option. So nothing's official, but it, it, that's kind of just showing where Skechers is thinking and some of the cool ideas that could be coming. Yeah down the pipe and it looked it looked amazing i mean you <laughs> did a nice job like it was hot but um yeah i mean for me uh it, it, i'm so, you know i get so geeked out on all this stuff it's so much fun to see them roll out product i think probably the category that i need the most but i don't get excited about is your daily trainers so like your shoes like the cumulus or you know nike pegasus and those kind of things but they're the shoes that probably I should be more excited about because those are the shoes that are going to work for most people. I think I get more excited with the speed day shoes and that kind of stuff, especially if they can be used for like, if you, if you just give me a, a speed shoe that's only built for speed, low, you know, low stack, you know, stuff like that. It's not as much fun as when you get a shoe and you're like, wow, I can do daily runs in this and I can, you know, drop the hammer when I need to. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the shoes that fit into that category are, we reviewed the Kimbara together. The uh, Kimbara is one of those. I think that you look at a shoe like the Brooks Tempo, the Razor 3, shoes that fall into that category of being, you know, just a fun shoe to do daily miles in that you can kick it up in. So, I mean, yeah. that, those, are, those are the ones I get worked up for. I, I'd agree too. Just on my end, when, when you're writing a description or you're doing a video, it, it's kind of hard to get excited for kind of your just run of the mill shoe, um, especially with just how many great options are out there. Not to say these traditional everyday trainers aren't needed because a lot of people are using them, but just in terms of pure excitement, I, I'd agree. Uh, some of these faster shoes are a lot easier to get excited about. Well, they also, I mean, I don't know what the thought process is behind this, but usually like your daily trainers, they put in boring colors and in bo boring looks and then they give you a, a fast day shoe it's got an electric blue bottom black top with vents on it i mean it just i mean it they just look like you want to covet it so it's like you know maybe that's something they should start doing is making those daily trainers pop a little more but i think 
you know, maybe it goes down to psychology when someone's starting running, they maybe don't want to draw so much attention to themselves. They, they want to get out there and, and be a little bit modest. And so I get it, but come on, bring it to the middle level. <laughs> <laughs> well, now with this new show uh, that we're doing, we really want to connect with the community, give the people what they want, and some fans reached out. Uh, they had some questions for you, so we're going to share those. So our first question is, Thomas, what is the most innovative product you've seen released in your career? I mean, hands down, it's got to be the Vaporfly. I mean, no shoe has rocked the the world, uh, the running world as much. I mean, look, we're, we're making new laws as a result of, of, of the shoe. Debate on it has been back for people who love it and people who are jealous of it and hate it. I mean, it's, it's been the Mike Tyson of, of running shoes. It just knocked everybody out and people are like, well, it knocks everybody out, but it takes all the fun out of boxing. It's not real boxing. It's just somebody knocking people out. I'm like, yeah, it's so much fun to see someone get knocked out. <laughs> You know, but, you know, true, true enthusiasts want to see the 12 round fight. But um, yeah, that's that there's no doubt. I mean, can you name another shoe that has left as big a mark on the running community? No, no. The, the Vaporfly by far, in my opinion, has changed the game. And I, I, I think it, it will continue. I mean, it, it was the first shoe that we've ever had this discussion that it was like performance enhancing and uh, it it's going to be something that's going to be a, a topic for years to come. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I or, or, agree. Yeah. And I, th I think before that uh, I'd have to say, um, you know, Kinvara actually, I think changed the landscape for running um, before the Kinvara and they had to make some sacrifices. We talked about this too. They made some sacrifices on durability and stuff to make a shoe that was, light and more natural feeling they drop the 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 um the actual drop the differential in the shoe they brought down to four which was, at that time was like more than half of what most shoes most shoes were at 10 or 12 and they dropped it down they made a light shoe that you could actually run a marathon in and i think that was the first step and then maybe the next one you go to like a hoka clifton but if you really look at what those are one was light one was cushion, then you get the vapor fly, light and cushion, and you know, magic. Yeah. All right, we got another question. Uh, what was one shoe that you didn't want to review that ended up surprising you? Whew, that's a good one. Um, because there's been several, like, I've been like, what is this? And I'd have to say the one it was when I first got Hocus, I was like, what is this thing? It looks like a freaking moon boot i don't know what this is and i pulled it out of the box i was like these are these are disgusting looking and i started running in them and i was like wow they, they feel pretty good and i don't know what happened it was like my brain switched and by the time that i was done and ready to review the clifton i didn't think it was ugly anymore i was like maybe i just didn't get it and i mean i, I still have the original pair that they gave me um but it was a, the original Hoka, Hoka One Clifton. And uh, it, I just, I thought, oh, this is, this is a Frankenstein shoe. And it turned out I fell in love with it. <laughs> well, speaking of Frankenstein shoes, our final question is, if you could create your dream custom shoe, so any midsole, outsole, or upper, what would it be? <sighs> That's getting tough because so many people are making really good uppers and stuff right now. Um, you know what I would love to see? Um, my, the Lunar Epic High. I actually liked the high color of that. And I kind of miss, it made the shoe feel totally connected to the midsole. So I would have loved to seen like the evolution of the Lunar Epic High and maybe with some of the new, either React foam on the bottom or you know, throw some hyperburst style uh, on the bottom. You know, you, th you throw on something like this DNA flash with that booty. And I mean, one thing I loved about that shoe, some people got a problem with it hitting on the Achilles and rubbing. I, for me, that upper just disappeared. And I felt like the bottom of my foot just now had this cushioning on it. 
that like it was it was like magic i the, i just loved it so i would say i'd love to see uh an evolution of that upper on some of the newer newer phones whether it be react zoom x hyperburst you know uh even now we get into you know the that ever run plus pb love to see that feel where it just feels that connected to my foot with the new cushioning i think i would be pretty excited about yeah uh, that would so be kurt <laughs> yeah. I, I will get kurt on it <laughs> yeah the, those high tops can for me personally uh it was kind of hit or miss between the shoes but it sounds like the the epic kind of was just the perfect fit for your for your foot's uh shape so that's that's interesting to hear that that would be your your dream shoe <laughs> well i guess i guess what i'm saying the dream shoe would be is i like the higher collar because it just connected the whole thing felt there was no difference between the upper and my foot yeah. and with it being like the it's just a knit so it's like one layer and so i guess what i'm saying my dream fit would be is just that connected feeling uh through the shoe to the midsole where i don't even notice the upper and yeah. that's lunar epic high is probably the closest i've ever gotten yeah that uh that dream fit is what we're always searching for and it's yeah. what you uh it's, that's what your job is reviewing shoes and trying to find that perfect shoe for you now for people who want to reach out maybe see some of your reviews see some of your content where can people find you i mean believe in the run.com is obviously our website uh we are you know on youtube as well so we just hit we're a little bit behind the game in YouTube, but we're getting there. Like, uh, you know, we started after some of the other guys, but we're catching up. We're, we're at about, we're, I think we just crested 16, you know, we're almost near, uh, we're, you know, hopefully hit 17,000 uh, subscribers soon. And then we're on Instagram. We do pretty well there. And uh, we have a great, very active group on Facebook, the uh, Believe in the Run group on Facebook. And, uh, you know, pretty much any any place except for Twitter, we probably don't spend a ton of time on. I mean, we even have a TikTok account, but I don't even, <laughs> I, don't even I don't even mess with that. Um, but yeah, uh, we we're pretty much everywhere that you know you want to find us. If you did want to talk to us on Twitter, we are there. We That's just great. don't invest in it as much as we do the other channels. That's great, and it's great to hear that your YouTube account is growing. We had you on our channel recently. You went running shoe shopping so that was a lot of fun so that if you're was interested in checking that out i would highly recommend it thomas has quite an arm and he throws running shoes pretty good so i would that, that spiral or something i tell you we got it yeah yeah well perfect well thanks for coming out joining us um personally i would love to have you out back in san Luis obispo soon so hopefully yeah. we can make that happen uh but for now that's that's going to be the end of our show thanks for coming out yeah, thanks, Connor. It was great. I'll talk to you guys soon. We'll see ya.